rogue adventure group for those who serve. We're in Cape Town, South Africa. It comes with the beautiful scenery around and getting back to nature. Because it is so far away, it's an adventure to get to. When you're diagnosed with operational stress injury or PTSD, your world gets really small. And so we're trying to open that world back up to people. Well, uh, Rogue Adventure Group is a veteran-run nonprofit. Um, myself, Ryan, and Derek started it. The purpose behind it is to help as many injured veterans and first responders as we can. And we do that through adventure therapy from veterans for veterans. Yeah. Kiteboarding is the, the main focus of the camp. Okay, so just for like a little rundown of what we've done so far on the camp. Um, day one was kind of more of a rest day because it was a really long trip for everybody. I think it was, what, 31, 32 hours for yeah. the entire travel time. So we wanted everybody to just be able to sleep in that day. Um, and then just get them orientated to the area. So we brought them out to the beach, put our feet in the water, just checked it out, showed them around Bloberg, the town that we're in, uh, just like all the little restaurants in the square where they could go check out kiteboarding gear, where they could go you know, have a good meal. So did a, a pretty in-depth uh, safety talk just right. to make sure that everyone was aware of the area, any dangers, any local customs, anything like that, that uh, we could let them know if they haven't been to Cape Town before. And then we went to the waterfront, which is a really beautiful spot. Uh, lots of cool stuff to see, some shopping, had some lunch there. And from that point, went up to Table Mountain of the gondola uh, for a pretty amazing sunset up there, actually. It was a really clear day, which is uh, really lucky that we actually got it on the day that we wanted to get up there. And uh, got up there and just kind of walked around, let the sun set, and everybody get to know each other a bit more. A couple of people kind of took off on their own and just kind of had a bit of alone time up on the mountain, a little bit of peaceful uh, thinking time. And uh, that was it for day one. A lot of excitement going to bed, getting yep. ready to kite. Uh. At day two kicked off with some kiteboarding right on, uh, on Kite Beach here in uh, Lelberg Strand and uh, everyone was super excited. The wind was behaving and the waves were beautiful and uh, we, we just kited for about three hours and uh, everyone got their wetsuits on and got all their gear and so it a, it's a new experience for everyone. Yeah, so we kited for a day and came back and uh, kind of had a little bit of an after action, just talked about what everyone enjoyed, if anyone had some further questions on uh, how to control the kite or set it up or anything. and. Uh, then we just made dinner together and yeah. uh, everyone had a had an early night because uh, you are tired after day one of trying to learn kiteboarding. So everyone was uh, mentally and physically exhausted and uh, I think went to bed with a good sense of achievement that day. For sure. Yeah, and then day three is again kiting, but we went to a different location about an hour and a half from Bloberstrand, a place called Shark Bay, which is an amazing little place, uh, really shallow, crystal clear water about waist deep once you walk out a ways. Uh, so a perfect place to kind of learn the next step of kiteboarding, the next evolution, which is uh, body dragging. So it's when you're trying to drag to get your board when you lose it, which is very important. Um, and from that point on, once everybody got comfortable with that, was actually trying to get up on the board. So we got some, we got to see some first rides that day. Uh, definitely some big smiles on everybody's face at the end of the day, for sure. Everybody, again, extremely tired at the end of the day. and. Uh, Again, feeling a good sense of accomplishment, and we were all very proud of everybody to like see how much they progressed. And I'd say everybody's on the same level yeah, at the end yeah, of the day it's... too. Um, it all worked out really well. Came back here, and I think we had a braai that night. Um, yeah. So our first braai, which is a wood fire barbecue, and uh, just had a meal as kind of a family, and so it was a really good way to end the day. Uh, and then that brought us on to the next day, which is a first for all three of us. We've never been seal snorkeling. Uh, went out to Hout Bay, jumped on a boat, went out about a 15 minute boat ride out to uh, a rocky point where there's a colony of, I can't remember how many they said, a couple thousand yeah, seals. Thousand. And we were pretty lucky. I think we were the only boat there that day until a bit later somebody came, came in there. But it was just our group, a really great company that we went with, uh, really made it a good experience. 
and we ended up uh, yeah jumping in the water with a bunch of seals, kind of like sea puppies, yeah. swimming all around us. Uh, amazing experience, and I think everybody had a really good time. People got out of the water with some pretty big smiles on their face. Yeah, I think we've yeah. talked about it too, like the healing power of the ocean, and there's just something so crazy just about being in these animals' environment and you're kind of awkwardly swimming yeah. around and we got masks and wetsuits and we're, we're diving under to check them out but they're just so majestically swimming around you everywhere. And it was just a really special experience to have. Just, you just feel really small For the sure. second you're in the ocean with like thousands of animals yeah. diving around you and they're all coming pretty close to come check you out and it, uh, it was really cool. Our day, yeah, day four we went to Cape Point so it's the furthest southern western tip of Africa that you can go to. Um, a bit of a drive, and everyone was super excited for it. So, uh, I mean, in the van, we made a playlist together, and everyone was rocking out and having a good time. And uh, we stopped and uh, looked at some local shops and just some, some African carvings and stuff. A few people picked up some stuff and uh, went and did a little hike, and you can just see everything. And it is insane, the view from there and just the feeling of insignificance when you're standing on a mountain yeah, for this southwestern tip of Africa. Yeah, and on the way there, we also got the chance to see some penguins in their natural habitat, which is pretty cool too. Uh, just chilling out on some rocks. Can't really get up too close to them because it's not allowed to disturb them, but we were lucky to actually see one in a bush that was just hanging out, kind of doing a little dance for us. And that, throughout the trip, like we've seen a lot of animals, yeah. we've done a lot of things in the ocean, but uh, there's so much eco-friendly and environmentally friendly stuff here that every effort's been made to make sure that the habitats of everything isn't disturbed and everything is just yeah. just done really professionally and we went with the companies that are green and eco-friendly and they're sustainable for Africa and for South Africa as well. And the baboons. Ah, baboons. Yeah, yeah. that was pretty cool too. So. On the way to Cape Point, there's a, a group of baboons that hang out down there, and uh, we were pretty lucky to cross paths with them. They were walking around on the roads, they were grooming each other, right, right in everybody's faces, trying to open up car doors. Yeah. And gangsters. <laughs> <laughs> And then the next day was shark cage diving. Shark cage diving was insane. <laughs> so we saw a great white, which they hadn't seen in what, nine weeks there? Well, they'd seen one the week before, and before that, it had been nine weeks since they'd seen one. So we were actually incredibly lucky to get in the water and within, what, five minutes, yeah. one swam by? Yeah, three and a half meter juvenile, just great a little white guy. shark. <laughs> yeah, it was huge. Swam, just uh, like I was in the cage, and it's off on my right hand side, and it swam by and then it kind of hooked under and then kind of looked at us and then swam away. And it was just uh, terrifying. It was a crazy pretty, experience, pretty it was safe, but it's also, yeah. it's an apex predator and you're in the ocean with it. So it was a yeah. uh, bucket list for me, amazing. And I, I know everyone who's Everybody there. had a good time with that. Everybody got to see Gray White. We got to see Gray White. That was a super successful day. We had to get up really early. Yeah. It's quite a drive, but worth every minute of it yeah. for sure that day. Yeah, the great white shark was awesome. It was huge. And that brings us to today. Yeah, today. So we had a braai, we had a bunch of people over. Everyone is really, you can just feel how gelled everyone is as a family. And uh, we had some few, a few locals over and, and everyone is just happy to be hosting. It's, uh, We're all hanging out with you right now. So it's pretty cool. Cool to see. And cool to see that everybody's like, that's we wanted to bring some locals around as well to to introduce to everybody so that they would be able to, uh, Well, just you know, the, the tight-knit kiteboard yeah, community. Exactly. And here it is in action. I yeah. mean, some of these people don't have a lot in common besides kiting, but, you know, we've it's been... It's a huge hanging, common holiday, though. Yeah, so hanging great. out for hours yeah. now and having a braai and just getting along, and, yeah, it's been really good. So it was after Shark Age Young, but we had a, a wonderful visit from uh, Lewis Crather. He's a professional kiteboarder who... Uh, really helped us out actually on our first fundraiser in Squamish. Uh, kind of put us front and center and was really trying to get some attention on us. So we really appreciated that. And he wanted to help us a bit more. So he came out and uh, talked to our group for a couple hours last night about the, uh, just the, the stoke about kiteboarding. Yeah, and his passion and, yeah. and how, and his journey into getting into it and, and just reiterated that, just how special of a journey everyone just started by getting into kiteboarding and how whether they knew it or not, that their lives from the second they put that kite in the air had been changed forever. Yep. And 
they're gonna be obsessed with it just like everyone who's ever tried it is. I would say the biggest change we've seen in the participants since the beginning of the camp is uh, a big change in their attitude. Everybody came here a little bit, you know, their guard was up, a big wall around them, uh, much like I used to feel for years and years. And you could just see slowly, day after day, hour after hour even, that wall just starting to crumble down. And everybody kind of starting to come out a little bit more, starting to be more comfortable around each other, starting to open up about um, not only past experiences, but uh, experiences that they're still feeling right now, struggles that they're having. Um, starting to just talk about the future, which is I think a big thing that a lot of people don't do when they're going through things. Like, our group and like what we went through, uh, starting to talk about the future, not living in the past and actually not even just the future, living in the moment. And you can just see people living in the moment, smiling, having fun and uh, just being social. Well, I think uh, the second uh, we met everyone at the airport, obviously it's a long flight, so people are pretty tired, but um, as we started to get to know them, <clears throat> they started letting us know of their individual challenges. So some of them were just, that was the first flight they've taken in 10 years. And the, I mean, their challenge started when they left, and then they'd already had this gigantic achievement the second that we met them. So they're already had done something they didn't think they could do in the last 10 years. And then as we went to do stuff in crowds, as we went up gondolas, and when we did some, uh, we went up Table Mountain. Just more, more challenges were facing in a everyone. And then, place too, like yeah, and then yeah. actually we wouldn't even hear about that it was a challenge until they they beat it. And so we're hearing about the, you know, the victory already yeah. that, that, oh, I made it up uh, Table Mountain. And the yeah. crowd was really bothering me, but you know what, I pushed through and now I'm, I'm on top of the world and this is one of the most beautiful views I've ever seen. So. And that's where the coming, living in the moment thing started out yeah. there, right? You push through a victory and I think people start feeling better and they start just enjoying that space and that and time right even, then and even there. I've right? noticed a bit of a, a physical change too. People are just, you know, they got a little tan yeah. or, you know, people have actually, you know, a few beards got shaved off and yeah. uh, people are just feeling healthy and excited about where they are and what they're doing. The, the videos at night, everyone's researching kiteboarding, everyone's watching cool kiteboarding videos and, and getting together in little packs in their room. Hey, have you seen this video yet? Have you seen this one yet? And uh, so it's really cool to see the the, the change in them and then also in us too. I mean, Absolutely. it's been really a big change in me getting to feel this tribe again that... Uh, yeah, and just to see it all coming together. Like we kind of had a, a, an idea of how it would all work, but to actually see that it's starting to, to build a tribe. Yeah. And it's our tribe too, you know, like yeah. we're part of this just as much as them. Uh, everybody's on the same level, 100%, and we're just... Uh, we're also just this, you know, we're in the same position. Yeah, we exactly. just we, we need the same thing that everybody else on this camp needs. We and need I think that's important that. for us too. It's, I mean, yeah. we both have post-traumatic stress and we have our bad days and our good days as well. And you don't need to be 100% healthy to do your best at helping other people. So even though, you know, some of them might be having a really bad day, if they see us, you know, having a bad day, they're going to come and ask how we're doing, try to comfort us. And, and that just goes around and around. And that's totally been happening. Yeah. So, you know. Yeah. A couple times I'm, just, I'm, you know, kind of a little bit tired and maybe not in the best mood, and you got some of these people coming to asking me how I'm doing, which yeah. is which is really cool because we're all helping each other, right? So, For sure. Yeah, it's a really symbiotic relationship where everyone yep. is just doing their best to take care of everyone because that sense of family just happened on day one, and it's done nothing but get stronger and stronger um, throughout the camp. Yeah from veterans for veterans yeah. like it's us we know what we need and we know what they need yeah. and we're all just mixing together to do our best to to help each other yeah. out and in that way things are gonna feel like things are gonna happen for to sure do some real healing yeah we, we've had some amazing supporters so far sponsor this camp and help us get it going and uh, the thing is now we're looking to the future and we're looking to see how we can sustainably help as many veterans as possible. And with that, we need your help in donating anything that you can. The big thing is uh, services and airplane flights and anything we can do. Accommodation, to... yeah, meals, uh, transportation. It doesn't need to just be sums of money. It can be really anything that helps run the camp, right? Uh, kiteboarding instruction. So if people are looking to volunteer to be uh, kiteboard instructors for our camp, that'd be appreciated. I mean, absolutely anything would be appreciated. 
and for I, sure. I know there's a lot of people with uh, veterans issues are really close to their heart and uh, if they were looking for a way to make a really big impact um, I think that Rogue Adventure Group is that is that way has been life-changing their lives are never going to be the same after this camp and I think that the new standard of living that they're achieving is just amazing and I think that if people would like to donate or to sponsor one individual in particular that would be the best way to make a make a huge impact on on veterans issues and some veterans lives and if anybody out there is looking for more information uh, you could visit our website uh, www.rogueadventuregroup.com uh, there's a piece in there go to yep. contact us go straight to our email at info at rogueadventuregroup.com and you can ask us any questions or if you have any uh, information or ways that you think that we could get some funding, throw it over our way. Uh, you can also follow us at uh, at Rogue Adventure Group on Instagram or Rogue Adventure Group at Facebook.com. Yeah. And uh, we know not everyone is in a position to give. I mean, uh, a any amount usually helps. But uh, another thing that will help the veteran community as a whole and first responder community is if you know someone who might be struggling or you haven't talked to in a while or might be isolating, get them to reach out to us or you reach out to us and we'll reach out to them. And uh, I think that uh, this program could be a benefit to them and their families and their quality of life. So the first people that we would like to thank for making this camp happen, which is a pretty long list of people, is uh, Bo Van Wick Photography, who is uh, actually the people filming us right now. And they've stuck with us every single day throughout this camp, and it's been an absolutely amazing experience. Bo and uh, Yasmina are great people and are part of the family and part of this camp. From that point on, we've got uh, support from Wounded Warriors Canada. We've got Warrior Adventures Canada, which is a brother organization of ours, uh, some guys that we actually were in Afghanistan with uh, 10 years ago. And, progress through uh, to do some different things in their career. They're still in and they're somehow running this amazing program right now, yeah. which is a huge shout out to those guys for sure. A big thank you to Fountainhead Tattoo and uh, River Valley Printing uh, for helping us out with our logo and getting our name out there to everyone. Yeah, Alliance uh, Adventure Retreat, Retreat, which is in the Philippines. Uh, it's a Canadian veteran and his wife who started a program down there. They are on an island that they have a resort on and they're running a program very similar to ours as well. And uh, we're looking forward to working with them more in the future. Uh, Mountain Fitness Center, been a big supporter of getting our, our name out there and helping us out in the beginning. Yeah. There's some stuff, some <coughs> Making fundraising. sure we're uh, beach ready for this trip as yeah, well. Act, so. Absolutely, we work out at their gym, it's a great spot. Yeah. Uh, sea to Sky Kiteboarding is a group uh, organization that we're gonna be working with this summer in Squamish. That's gonna be the school that we use for our Squamish camp. So. Really big shout out to those guys. Reflex Supplements in Squamish has been a big help. Helped donate uh, for a silent auction. Here. And Thompson Rivers University. That's actually a, a very, very, very large one that we uh, need to mention. And we're partnered with them to do a study on the effects of adventure therapy on post-traumatic stress disorder and other mental disorders. And uh, that has started at the beginning of this camp. And we're looking forward to working with them long term to progress the research on exactly what we're doing and try to try to validate this and other programs like it. So one day hopefully that adventure therapy will be kind of a first first response or first measure when people are ready for it in their healing journey and it'll just be standardized and uh, we're really proud to be adding to that research. Absolutely. And you know for for the rest of them just all our private supporters we've had some some very generous donations from private people who just uh, did all the goodness of their heart and we put a huge thank you to them because this wouldn't be happening without them. Very deeply grateful for everyone who's helped us out and uh, yeah I think it's been worth it and I think they're gonna see, um, a see really positive results. Yeah, real sure. positive. Yeah. Although here at Rogue Adventure Group we found what we believe is the best way to help veterans and first responders who are going through these tough times in their lives, we can't do it without the support of the community in our country and we need your help to make this happen.